should you buy a house in 2024? Is this year a good year to buy a house? That's what I wanna talk about in this video. As like many of the people watching this video, I'm trying to decide at the moment whether now is a good time to buy or not. And there are a number of things to consider. So I wanna talk about all of my current thought processes in this video and hopefully it will help you guys make the right decision for you because that's what's super important is that buying in 2024 is an individual decision. What is the right decision for you and what is the right decision for me could be very, very different. So I think the first thing you need to ask yourself when you're considering whether to buy this year is whether you think that this crash is over. We know that very roughly, nominally, house prices are down about 5%, and when you adjust for inflation, that's more like 15%. So there has already been a fairly sizable correction in the value of a property. Now, all of the major indices are predicting further falls in 2024, um, despite some of the recent, I guess, positive headlines you might say that are suggesting things are recovering i think it is fair to assume that house prices still have downside potential this year but buying a house is more than just a financial decision so if we deal with the financial side first and then we can move on to some of the other aspects so with that in mind you have to consider your financial position and how at risk you are to negative equity so for anyone that's not aware negative equity very very quickly is when your mortgage is greater than the value of your property. So if you buy a house with maybe a 90% mortgage and then that house drops 10% in value, you're on your way to negative equity. And if you're forced to sell, then obviously you're gonna be in debt when you do so. Negative equity is a very real risk if you've only got a small deposit. Now, personally for me, as I sold a house a couple of years ago before we moved into the current rental, we have a decent sized deposit. So negative equity for me isn't really a consideration. Of course, I don't want to overpay for a property and I prefer to avoid losing money on a property, but other decisions could outweigh that. So for you, you have to decide how much the financial side of things, how that value compares to some of the other things that you're going to think about. So I've got a list of five or six things here to go through for you guys to think about when deciding whether to buy in 2024. The first thing to think about is where and what you are buying. If you're buying in the southeast, it is very likely, or in London or any areas where house prices have been very, very high over the past decade or so, those house prices are probably going to come down further than maybe a bit further up north where house prices aren't so overinflated. We're seeing a bit of redistribution of wealth as people are moving out of the richer areas to the slightly cheaper areas as well. So that's one thing to keep in mind and also the type of property you're buying. There's the downside on cheaper properties is a lot more limited than it is on the more expensive properties. Anything that is requiring a large mortgage is likely to see greater downside. That's what I've been seeing on Rightmove and that's that's what I'm expected to continue seeing over the next year or so as the market adjusts to the higher cost of mortgage debt. So think about where you're buying. Is that region more susceptible to falls than others? And the type of property you're buying, is that more susceptible to falls as well? But like I said, it's not all about financials. If you can afford to take that hit and you're not going to be forced to sell in 12 months or two years or something like that. The other thing to keep in mind is if you don't buy in 2024, what are you delaying in your life what is the trade-off to not buying now now an obvious trade-off for us is we're in a rental property so we're paying out rent per month that is one obvious financial trade-off but for other people it might be for example you might want to get married and you might want to get your first family home and you can't start your family until you get your own home in which case the financial side of things as long as they stack up is a much smaller consideration versus wanting to move on with the rest of your life or maybe you've got elderly relatives you need to look after them and you want to move them in with you and you need a bigger home or maybe you've got a big house at the moment and you're just struggling to afford it now and you want to downsize there can be various reasons that you may want to or need to move and you need to consider those as well it's just not purely a financial decision sometimes it might be better to risk taking a five or ten percent hit on your investment because you get the other benefits of being able to move on with your life so always keep in mind the trade-off, your lifestyle trade-off versus the financial risk that you'll be taking. The other thing I want you to keep in mind as well is that as much as we'd like to think we can time the bottom, what we've seen, what's become very, very clear over the past year or so is the majority of the house price indices aren't really overly helpful 
and pretty much all of them lag as well. So it's very, very hard to know when that bottom will arrive. And the chances are you won't know the bottom's arrived until a few months after that. The other thing with that is that in addition to being almost impossible to time the bottom, is that you're probably are going to be very particular about the house or the property that you want to buy. And I know for me, I am very, very particular and very picky. So finding the right property is very difficult regardless of price. So the property that you want to buy is unlikely to be for sale at the exact moment that the bottom arrives. So you're probably going to be buying before the bottom or after the bottom. But it's almost impossible that the perfect property for you is going to come up at the perfect price at the bottom of the market. You're going to be paying on the way down or the way up one way or the other. So if you accept that that is part of this process, that you're never going to buy the bottom. You just have to try and judge the general trend. Have we lost a decent amount of value already? Yes, I think so. Is there more to come off? Yes, I think so as well. But if the right property comes up now, would I consider it? Yes. And that brings me on to my last point, which is the HPIs, the house price indices, is their values are focusing more on either a national or regional average, but they in no way reflect the good or bad value of an individual property listing. So just because house prices nominally might be down 5% in a particular area, it doesn't mean that the property that's just been listed or one that's already listed who may be open to negotiation you may be able to get that at 15, 20% below what the peak was back in 2022. And that is why I'm looking at the moment. So although I haven't committed to saying, right, I want to buy a house in 2024, my approach is I'm happy where we are, but if a dream home comes up, I am ready to go and view that. I've got a agreement in principle ready there. I know how much I can borrow. I've been looking into solicitors and conveyances. So if an opportunity does come up, I'm ready. And I think that's the best advice I can give anyone is make sure you're ready so that if the opportunity does come up, if that dream home is there, even if it's overpriced at the moment, you want to be in a position that you can take action if they reduce their price or if you decide to view an offer and somehow they do decide to accept a lower price than what they're listing at at the moment. So don't let the national HPIs dictate to you what the individual value of a property is that you're interested in. If that property, even if the property isn't necessarily down in value, if it offers all of the things you want in life, then to you, that property is worth more anyway. So you have to see things from your individual perspective, what is valuable to you, not so much just what the HPIs are saying. So that's one of the reasons why I am viewing at the moment. And it's one of the reasons why I think the people who are considering buying or looking to buy should be considering looking at the moment. I'm not saying go and buy. I'm still saying to anyone that doesn't have to buy at the moment, be patient. I'm in no rush. I'm sitting here patiently. I viewed one house in 2023. And so far in 2022, I've viewed two properties and I haven't offered on any of them. So be patient. But if a, if the right property comes up tomorrow and I go and see it, and I think the value proposition does stack up and it ticks all of the boxes for me and my family, then I would consider offering. So there is no right or wrong answer. You need to think of all of these things together. What is the right thing for you? What would you feel comfortable? What's your financial risk? How much negative equity risk can you tolerate? All of those things together. Now, if you are looking at houses at the moment and you're wondering why a house or that property is really for sale, as often we don't get the true reason, do we? I've got a video that shows you some free advanced checks that you guys can do now that a lot of people don't talk about and you can find out potentially the real reason why that property is being sold. So I'll pop up that video now and I'll see you guys over there.